is another heartbreaking example of why it's not good to just let a car sit. So according to the records that I've found, this car was impounded in May of 2021, and I just got it January 2022. So it sat a little over six months, probably just sitting in the Texas sun, obviously not being washed or waxed or anything. And I don't know if it comes out on camera or not, but the water basically just kind of sits almost in the paint and it makes it really hard to dry because you keep wiping it and wiping it but it's still it's like it absorbs into the paint so I'm gonna do my best to remedy this it's probably gonna take two different compounds then a polish and then finally a paint sealant Because it probably looks better on camera than it does in person. I mean, it's really a beautiful car. It needs a little bit of TLC that I'm going to give it. And then hopefully sell it. And make somebody a happy, proud owner of it that will take care of it. I'm going to do the whole car, but I'm only going to film half of the hood just so you can see kind of what I do. Because this is an unknown finish, I'm going to start it with a clay bar treatment. That'll get out any contaminants and kind of give a first teeny bit of cut. Then I'm going to go with the Meguiar's Ultra Cut. That's got a lot of cut to it and it'll take out the imperfections. I'm not going to use that on the entire painted surface. I'm just going to use it on the roughest areas. I find really good luck with the swirl remover for giving a light cut and leaving a nice soft polished looking finish. But despite that I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the ultimate polish afterward. These three products I'm going to be using the random orbital buffer on a fairly high speed. Don't use a lot of product because I don't want it to sling all over the place. And then after that, I will decide if it needs a coat of new finish and then a wax or ceramic wax or just a wax, depending on what it looks like after the polish. I'm kind of a fan of new finish. It's sort of a paint sealant, even though they call it a polish. Anyway, we'll get started. As you can see right now, the bottles sit there just fine finish is very rough. They will they won't slide no matter where I put them. I guarantee you when I'm done even up here they'll probably slide off. The main thing with the clay is to keep the surface wet and just basically wipe it back and forth then periodically you want to flip it over and re-knead it in your hands so that you're not just scrubbing dirt and contaminants back in. If the surface is wet enough it'll glide. If you hit a dry spot it kind of sticks. You want it to glide. A lot of dirt and contaminants stuck in this groove here, which is why I'm giving it a lot of extra attention. Give it a good wipe down with a microfiber to get all the streaks and stuff off. Just that clay bar alone took a lot of the imperfections off. And it's got a much smoother finish already. And I'm going to go ahead and do the ultra cut on here just real quick. Shake it up real well, if it, especially if it's been sitting. Mine hasn't been sitting, so it's pretty well mixed. Start out with about that much. I've got this one set to five out of six speeds. We'll see if that gives a good performance.
for this step. I still am using an orange compounding pad, but this one is just a little bit softer than the other one that I used. And I'm going to be more thorough with this product because I want to really get a good shine going now. And I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there is a visible difference between the section I just did and here where I haven't done yet. And then same thing, you can do this on the headlight to get the next phase of shine. I'm switching to a blue pad, which is a polishing pad. It's even softer. And I'm using the Ultimate Polish. It's, it seems to be a really good product. And again, we'll just really work this one in the surface and get that shine to pop out. And let me stress again, this is not necessary if your paint's in good condition. This is a neglected paint job that sat out in the Texas sun. And before that, it may not have even been that well taken care of. So because it's in such bad shape, I'm gonna go ahead and do new finish and then do the car wax. And we're gonna shake up your products. If they've been sitting, make sure everything gets mixed well. I do find a lot of the car polishes and waxes will start to separate in the bottle if they've been sitting. The new finish is probably not something to get on the headlight, although you can put it on the windshield glass and get sort of a rain repellent. And I can tell you, this windshield definitely needs at least this because it is in bad shape. New finish generally applies by hand. I suppose you could put it on with a buffer, but it seems like you'd be wasting time doing that. 
and always risking that the product will sling off. I've seen my video about new finish before. I got a lot of hateful comments. I guess people were thinking that I'm a professional detailer and was charging people to buff and polish and everything and then just putting new finish on their car instead of doing all that work. That's the only thing I could think of because the comments were really hateful. And all I was saying was, if you are kind of a lazy person who doesn't want to do all the other steps, this product does a pretty good job just on its own. Uh, it's not a substitute for professional detail, but it does a really good job. But that made a lot of people mad. And like I said, the only thing I can think is that they assumed that I was ripping off customers or something, which I'm not a professional detailer. I don't have detailing customers. So I'm not ripping anybody off. All right, we'll let that dry a little bit better to a haze and then I'll buff that off and then we'll wax it. It looks like it's dry enough to buff off. And I always use microfiber towels to do the buffing. Do a good job picking up the dust. Kind of as I feared, I'm going to need to do this channel by hand because it is really rough down the middle and the buffer is obviously not getting to it. See where we're at now. That's without, <laughs> that's without waxing. So we can go to about there and <laughs> So you saw before I started, it, I could basically put it at the end of the hood. This is the only wax I have with me for some reason. Kind of odd, but okay. So we'll spray it on. Just buff it in. It can be used on wet or dry surfaces. can also be used on the headlight, it says. Do our little reveal here. And it is night and day. <laughs> you have slick, rough. And so, I don't know where we can get the bottle to stay. So somewhere the wind is blowing really hard right now. <laughs> so definitely right there. And obviously it just slides off. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of the slickness there. So like I said, I'll do the rest of the car and get it looking like the uh, driver's half of the hood is looking. And the headlights are more noticeable when you look at them side by side. So that's the one I polished. And that's the one that's not. You can probably tell in the camera here how much more yellowed and foggy the passenger one is over the driver's one. So that'll get fixed. So let me preface it with I know I probably missed some spots and I haven't been over it with the detailing brush to get off the wax and any crevices or anything like that. So I probably did miss some spots. But this is what it's looking like now. And this is why I like to detail a car before I buy it, even though that's usually not an option. <laughs> but when you detail a car, you can find things 
that you wouldn't find just looking so like that spot there popped up that I didn't notice before and I'm strongly debating most of the roof is pretty good but right there I don't know if it shows up on camera very well or not and all across the front here I don't think it's really showing up but right here I think the clear coat is gone and now I'm polishing into the base coat so it's debatable for me possibly to sand and repaint just this portion of the roof so basically end it at this track and that way it doesn't have to be a perfect Nissan Silver and it probably wouldn't be noticeable uh, and then some of these are pretty well worn out and the front bumper same sort of thing right in here and here obviously got a lot of sun damage and really needs paint to make that good the problem is it's a 2004 car and Putting money into paint is probably not a wise decision. The other one that's really bizarre is this panel right here. I can see that it is showing up on the camera. At least down here you can see it up here. I don't know if you can see, but this whole panel is terrible. I can it needs to be sanded and repainted. This could probably be done with a duplicolor. You know, it's about eight bucks worth of paint and then clear it and it would match perfectly. But then you start going, well then should I do this too? <laughs> and then there's a couple blemishes like that. But overall for an 18 year old car, it's looking pretty good and even though like I said I know I miss spots and there's things I could go back over and buff some more I will promise you that the next time it gets washed the water will bead off it will not <laughs> just sit and kind of soak into the paint so pretty good turnaround for a couple hours of work like I said, the perfectionist in me wants to paint some of those spots. And the realist says, you know what, an 18-year-old car looking this good is probably good enough to sell or even drive myself. 